One of the biggest problems that happens in meetings when you're trying to make a decision about something is that people typically get stuck trying to decide between a few different ideas. And so in this video, you're gonna learn an exercise that helps you prioritize ideas no matter what you're talking about so you never get stuck again. Hi, my name is Amr. I'm a senior facilitator at AJN Smart. I've been facilitating for about eight years. And during that time, we've used the exercise that we're about to show you today, which is called Action Board Ton. The beautiful thing about it is that it works for any company of any size, in any industry, and really for any challenge. So what is the Action Board? Well, it's a very simple exercise that just helps you prioritize ideas visually. You see, in most meetings, people don't really visualize their ideas. And I don't mean sketching or anything. I just mean taking note of these ideas, putting them down on sticky notes, putting them up on a wall so you can just see them side by side and be able to compare them so you don't have to keep everything in your head. Because in a normal meeting that's kind of like one hour long, a lot of people talk and make a lot of points and it's almost impossible to keep all of that in your head and it's very easy to forget what was said like 20 minutes ago or 30 minutes ago, which makes discussing and comparing ideas a lot more difficult. And so what happens in most meetings when you're trying to prioritize ideas is that people will start to discuss them, but very quickly end up talking in circles, repeating the same points over and over, people talking past each other. And before you know it, the whole meeting is over and maybe your boss just makes a snap decision that nobody really agrees with and you have to move on with it. And when that happens, there's usually a high chance that that idea that got selected isn't the most cost effective or the most impactful. And that's where the action board exercise comes in. So now let me show you how this exercise works by looking at a real example. This is an action board that I took from a real workshop that I ran with a client a couple of weeks ago. So this is the end result of what that exercise should look like. So I'll explain that first, then I'll show you how we got there. So as you can see, we can we have a very simple two by two matrix. So the Y axis is called impact, the X axis is called effort. And the idea here is that you're gonna come into this exercise with a few ideas that you wanna prioritize. Then you start to plot them on this two by two matrix. And you're gonna end up with some ideas in uh, each of the quadrants, or sometimes maybe one quadrant doesn't have ideas. And what you're gonna end up prioritizing are gonna be the ideas in the do now quadrant. This is because if you look at our two by two matrix here, these are gonna be the ideas that have a lot of impact, but they're not very high on effort, right? So they give us the most amount of return based on our investment. And there are gonna be ideas that take a lot of effort, but also have a lot of impact. These are ideas that you might still wanna consider and work on in the background, but they're likely gonna take more resources, more time to implement, and they're gonna be tasks that don't have a ton of impact, but they're also pretty easy to do. And these ideas that fall into this quadrant, we can just make them uh, tasks for different individuals that take them and start to implement them. So how did we get here? Let, let's start with a blank board and show you how to actually run this exercise. So first you'll wanna capture the ideas that you're trying to decide between uh, and put them all on sticky notes, whether you're working in person or remotely, uh, just make sure that you've captured these ideas on sticky notes. Then you'll wanna draw your action board, your two by two matrix. So you simply draw an X axis, a Y axis, you label the Y axis impact, the X axis effort. Then you divide it into four quadrants and you don't have to label them in the workshop. You can do this part later, but basically this would be do now, this would be make it a project, this would be make it a task, and this would be forget for now. So obviously the stuff that is high effort but low impact are things that you shouldn't really be considering. So how do we even start to put ideas onto this board? Who decides where each idea should go? How much time do we spend on each idea? So the way we like to do it is we start with any of these ideas randomly and we bring it to the middle of the board. So the topic here, by the way, was that our client wanted to get better at giving all of their employees more time to do professional development. So they wanted to give everybody more time for learning and they were struggling with that topic a little bit. They had a few ideas on how to do that, but they didn't know which ones to implement. We have about like 10 ideas here. It wouldn't be realistic to implement them all at the same time. And so they wanted a way to prioritize them. So I just took one of these ideas randomly and it just says, block time on calendar and mark as do not disturb. So one of the problems they have is that a lot of the time with so many meetings and uh, chat messages and notifications going on, it can be really hard to dedicate time for learning. So one of the ideas was to block time on people's calendar. 
and mark themselves as do not disturb so people know that they're not really available. So what do you do with an idea like this? Well, like I said, first of all, you put it in the middle of the two by two matrix. And as a facilitator, you start asking the group, all right, where do we feel like this would fall on the impact axis, right? So you take it one at a time. We're not trying to decide impact and effort at the same time, but we're just trying to decide one first and then we'll do the other. So here, this is the impact in terms of how high or low. So let's say in the case of uh, our client, they said this is actually gonna be uh, really good. Uh, right now, we really tr are not really organized about uh, our learning blocks. So just blocking some time for learning is gonna be very useful and putting the ourselves on do not disturb is gonna uh, make distractions less impactful on, on the learning. So it's actually fairly good on impact, right? And so basically you can very quickly as a group align on where a particular idea can fall on the X axis. So typically we'd spend one minute on impact and one minute on access. So on most cases, we're not really spending more than two minutes per sticky note. And you as a facilitator can always start the conversation where you say like, uh, I feel like it kind of falls here. Does that look good to everybody? And then people might say, well, actually, I feel like it's more impactful. So maybe uh, take it up a, a notch or somebody might say like, well, I don't know, maybe not that much, bring it down. And you very quickly uh, come to a place that everybody's happy with. And it's important to also note that this isn't really a scientific exercise. This is more of an exercise that helps people visualize conversations that are happening in meetings anyway. So in most meetings, people are talking about how much effort something is going to take and how impactful is it going to be. So this is more about visualizing that conversation and it doesn't need to be super precise. It also tends to be more difficult with the first sticky note because you have nothing to compare it to. And so let's say we're happy with the impact here. And then I ask people, all right, now that we're done with impact, let's try to think about the Y axis. Where do we feel it falls on the Y axis? As in how much effort is it gonna take to implement? And for example, I could start by telling people, well, I feel like, you know, blocking time on your calendar and turning on do not disturb is actually, you know, very easy. It doesn't take any effort at all. So I feel like it would fall here. And then I would just check with the group, like, does that look right to you? And people would either say yes or no, or like maybe uh, it's a little more effort, a little less effort. And then we decide like it looks good here and we can move on to the next one. So basically I would bring on the next one and I'm gonna go through these a little bit faster now. And all of the subsequent uh, sticky notes are actually easier to get through because now you have something to compare against, right? So the next idea they were considering was to have working agreements within the team on what requires a meeting and what doesn't, right? So right now, one of the problems why people can't really dedicate a lot of time for learning is that uh, they have a lot of meetings, sometimes unnecessary meetings, right? And so again, we would start with impact. Uh, so the impact, how impactful would it be to reduce the amount of meetings that are happening? Uh, for a lot of people in the workshop a couple of weeks ago, they said that would be pretty impactful for them just to have more time and then when we talked about, so everybody agreed that it would be more impactful than blocking time actually, because fewer meetings uh, makes it a lot easier to spend time on professional development. So it ended up around here in the, uh, in terms of impact. And then we switched to, to effort. So we said like, all right, how much effort is it actually gonna take to come up with these working agreements? And we figured a team could probably sit down for about an hour and, uh, kind of come up with some guidelines for what constitutes what would need a meeting versus what maybe could be resolved just via email or something like that. And so it ended up somewhere around here, right? So that's the second sticky note. Then we can bring in the third sticky note. And as you can see, you can start to go through these pretty quickly. And each new sticky note you bring to the board is gonna be easier to add because you can compare it to the previous one. So for example here, the third idea was provide team members with strategies on how to politely decline a disruption of their time. So let's say some people get invited to a lot of meetings and right now there isn't really an accepted way of declining that invitation, but maybe if they sit down and come up with a few good phrases that uh, allow people to decline meetings, then it's gonna be much easier for them to avoid having to be in meetings where maybe they don't see the need to be, right? So again, we would start with impact. How impactful is this? Well, since this is gonna help me, you know, take part in fewer meetings, it's probably high on impact. And how much effort is it gonna take? Again, just sitting down and coming up with a few phrases. Uh, so maybe it sits somewhere there, right? 
And next one, again, we'll go through these a little more quickly. So working with the manager to make sure that block time works and does not disrupt everyone else. So this is basically about sitting down with your manager and making sure that he's blocked on your calendar and not disruptive to everybody else's workflow. And after a couple of minutes of discussion, I believe uh, it fell around somewhere here because it's just about kind of sitting down with your manager and uh, that would actually be pretty impactful to allow people to block their time off. The next one was team-wide time blocks or learning days, right? So this is one of those sticky notes that was a little bit higher on impact. So people were very excited for the idea of getting, you know, learning days. So maybe one day in every couple of weeks or in a month could be dedicated entirely to learning. But this is probably more effort to organize because it's going to take a lot of logistics. We're going to need to see how that's going to balance out with everybody's work. So this is going to take more effort. It's probably going to fall into the make it a project. This is probably going to take some planning, a few people to come together and talk about how actually that's going to work without disrupting anybody, right? Then the next one was about shared measurement of professional development goals. And that one, again, people had the idea of like, what if the learning was actually tied to someone's performance? And that was actually something that they needed to deliver on as part of their role. So people uh, thought this would be pretty impactful, but again, it takes some uh, definition work. It probably needs kind of a project team to be put behind it in order to come up with something that makes sense there. Next one was closed notifications during development times. This one was pretty easy. So, and while it's gonna have some impacts, probably not gonna be the most impactful thing in the world. So it was more of like make it a task, right? This is something that each person can do individually to just reduce distractions overall and make it a little bit easier to get some focus time on learning. And now we only have a couple to go. So setting realistic timeframes for goals. This was one of those ones as well, where people felt like, yeah, this would be, you know, it's not zero, but compared to the other stuff that we have on the board, it's probably not the most impactful but it's also a little bit easier. This is something that each person could do on their own in terms of their own tasks. And it just ended up being in the make it a task quadrant. And finally, the last idea here was setting a framework for how meetings should be run and making sure that they have a set goal to accomplish at the end, right? So like not having meetings that are vague or without like a solid agenda or anything like that. And based on kind of a quick assessment of effort and impact, it ended up being somewhere here. So this was, again, more of a project. It's going to require, you know, the development of that framework, then ideas on how to enforce that framework, making sure that everybody's adhering to it and people that are not just ignoring it. So it's probably going to take some work and it's probably going to be more of a project. It's going to be impactful, but it's also going to take uh, some amount of effort, right? And just like that, we very quickly sorted through 10 ideas. And like I said, the ideas that you'll want to focus on immediately are going to be the ones in the do now quadrant. These are low effort, but high impact ideas. And depending on your current uh, resources and capacity, you might decide to do maybe like the ones that have the highest impact. So you might decide to do just like the working agreements one or working with the team manager, or you might decide to do all of them. This is going to depend on your context, but these are going to be all ideas that are not going to be massive in terms of how much effort they're going to take. So you're going to be able to implement a few of them at the same time. And it might be that each you, you divide and conquer between the team. So a few people take care of one task, a few others take care of the other, and you're able to implement them simultaneously. And maybe in the background, you might want to consider the make it a project ideas and start to implement those slowly, but those are probably gonna take longer to show whether or not they're effective and they work and to start to show real results. So as you can see with the action board, you can very quickly prioritize ideas and it's a lot easier to do because everything is visual and you can take things one at a time. You can compare ideas to each other. And again, the first one takes more time than the rest and the other ones become much easier. So like I said, it takes about two minutes per sticky note to do this. And for if you only have like a handful of ideas and this whole exercise would only take about 10 minutes. I went through 10 ideas right now, which is a little bit unusual for this exercise, but I really wanted to give you 
a, an in-depth example of how this works. And so for something like this, it would take about 20 minutes, which if you think about it, is actually pretty fast. Being able to prioritize 10 ideas all compared against each other within just 20 minutes, whereas in a normal meeting environment, that would take much, much longer. And that's pretty much it for the action board exercise. As you can see, it's very easy to do, whether you're doing it in person or remotely. And if you are doing it remotely, then make sure to check out a template that we created that is just a blank version of what I showed you, and you can find that below the video. So if you have any questions about this exercise that I didn't cover in the video, put them down in the comments, or if there are other exercises that you would like us to make videos on, also let us know in the comments. And by the way, this action board exercise is something that we often run as part of a larger workshop. So if you're interested in something that takes you through the entire process of discussing a challenge, coming up with the ideas, and then prioritizing the ideas, make sure to check out the video that's on the screen right now. And if you're interested in more tips and tricks and little exercises that help you improve your meetings, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.